Hey, book lovers. Want to hear a story? Welcome back to Storytime with M. This is a mini episode from M's Books and Cats podcast. And I am sharing my book, Super Gym, a chapter or sometimes two a week. And this week is chapter 15. Now, just a quick warning, Super Gym contains mature content and may not be suitable for all readers. Otherwise, I hope you enjoy Chapter 15 of Super Gym. The juice bar was nearly empty. The neon purple and green lights gave the girls a strange, alien look that Thor did not find appealing. Still, tits were tits, and the juice bar was the only place in Famicili where trainers got in for free. Thor had gone there often in the first few months following his certification. Benjamin Pratt brought all of the newbies there during training, and the girls were instructed to do whatever the trainers wanted. Those nights got a little out of hand, and Thor had never felt entirely comfortable there. He stopped going when he was promoted to head trainer. His life became the gym, and he'd lost interest in the juice bar. For many of the trainers, the appeal wore off quickly. It was always the same girls, and after a while, things became a little too familiar. Only Mr. Pratt never seemed to tire of them. He was there most nights and had a private booth in the back. He very rarely participated. He would rather watch. Thor would have preferred one of the high-class restaurants that Mr. Pratt used for business meetings. The best ones still served actual food. Most of the cheap places had switched to serving shakes exclusively, which was fine if you never wanted to chew your food. Benjamin Pratt was already seated in his favorite place. There were girls on either side of him, and another hung over the back of the booth. They were all naked, and so thin that Thor could count their ribs. Their breasts were the only fatty parts of their bodies, and they were more chemicals than actual fat. Thor, my boy, the best of the best. Make room, girls. The man of the hour has arrived. Thor wedged himself between two sets of magnificent breasts and stared at Mr. Pratt in shock. He was drunk. Alcohol was nothing but empty calories and strictly forbidden in Famicili. Mr. Pratt bent this rule occasionally and would share a glass of bourbon with Thor, but he never consumed more than a few sips. Thor hated it. It burned and tasted like old wood. He could feel its effects immediately. He knew his body was not performing optimally, and he knew it would require extra work the following day. Still, he could never say no to Mr. Pratt. Tonight was going to be a long and tedious one. He would probably need a detox tomorrow morning. Mr. Pratt leaned across the table with a huge smile. There was a girl with her head in his lap. He grabbed her frizzy, bleached hair and pulled her upright. Thor, my boy. I'd like you to meet Alicia. Her eyes were vacant and dazed. Her blonde hair was tangled in Mr. Pratt's fingers. She wiped her mouth and nodded at Thor. Sup? He didn't know what to say. His tongue was dry and cemented to the roof of his mouth. He watched in mute horror as she climbed over the table. Her naked breasts dangled in the drinks and knocked over several cocktails. She straddled him and licked his neck. Thor tried to control his revulsion. She smelled like chemicals and semen, and her face was haggard and much older than she seemed at first. He sat still and tried to wait it out. What's the matter, my boy? Don't you like Alicia? I'm tired, sir. Been a long day. Not too long. Your only client was in the food labs for half the day. Thor didn't answer. This was his punishment. He waited to see what Mr. Pratt had planned. She's quite good if you give her a chance. Alicia, get off him. You know what you do best. Show him what a good wife you will be. Alicia's head disappeared below the table. Thor felt his heart stop. He couldn't breathe. He stared across the table at Mr. Pratt, The old man's smile was brilliant and never wavered, but his eyes were murderous. 
Thor swallowed hard. Dehydration or fear? Wife? She's all yours, my boy. Consider it your holiday bonus. I think I'd rather have the protein powder, sir. You can't be serious. You could have a lifetime of this. He gestured broadly with the hand holding his drink. His smile was permanently fixed in place. He winked. I told you she was good. She was good. Thor couldn't think. Mr. Pratt watched him intently. He wasn't smiling anymore. I can't, sir. I'm not ready. Why was his voice wavering? It moved up an octave and cracked. Mr. Pratt sighed heavily. No man is ever ready, my boy. You're an ideal. You must procreate. His smile was back and bright as ever. Trust me, Alicia is too good to give up. Benjamin Pratt's features were sharp. His narrowed eyes gave him the look of a wiry old wolf. He sighed again and drummed his thick fingers on the table. Is there some other reason you're rejecting my offer? No, sir. Of course not. Mr. Pratt reached over and grabbed Alicia's hair. He slammed her face into the table. Drinks spilled, glasses shattered on the floor. The other girls were screaming and clawing at them. One scratched Thor and left a thin trail of blood down his arm. His hand snapped back and made contact with her nose. There was a crunch, and she screamed. She scrambled over the back of the booth and fell headfirst onto the concrete floor. Her body twitched a little, and then lay still. Mr. Pratt was still smiling. There was a choked, gurgling sound coming from Alicia. Her face made a sickening squish every time it made contact with the table. He gave her head a final slam, and there was a loud crunching sound. The gurgling stopped. Mr. Pratt never took his eyes off Thor's face. Thor tried to keep his expression passive and untroubled, but an ache was building behind his eyes. He had seen a lot of things since he started working for Mr. Pratt but this was one of the worst. Alicia was dead weight. Mr. Pratt tossed her aside and she fell motionless to the floor. There was nothing left of her face except a bloody mass of tissue and splintered bone. Well, Thor, I tried. I thought you would be pleased. I'm just not the marrying type, sir. I guess not. Too bad. She was very talented. He sat back and finished his drink in one big swallow. He stood up and threw some money on the table. Let's go somewhere more private. We need to discuss Maggie. This was it. He was being demoted. Maggie would be reassigned, and his life was over. A rickshaw was waiting in front of the juice bar. The man and woman pulling it were thin and pale. Super Jim's success stories. Thor recognized them from the gym. They were two of Claudia's best clients. He hoped he wasn't being replaced by Claudia. She was a complete bitch, and Thor was certain she was playing for the other team. Not that he had a problem with that. Girls could screw girls, but only if he could watch. Claudia hated all men, but she hated Thor most of all. She was Mr. Pratt's number one before he got his certification, the power shifted once he was official, and Mr. Pratt put him on the fast track to head trainer. Claudia was out and Thor was in. She didn't take it well. She threw a tantrum of epic proportions in the super gym and was suspended for several weeks. Mr. Pratt should have demoted her, but Claudia was a good trainer. She got results, so he let her keep her clients. Mr. Pratt climbed into the rickshaw and Thor followed. The cart sank under his weight. He flexed his biceps and checked their size. He had missed his evening pump for the second day in a row and could feel his muscles shrinking. He needed his routine. He was getting smaller every day, and that simply could not happen. Daily growth in progress. That was his plan, and he must adhere to it. He was Thor. He was an ideal. With a quiet groan, the rickshaw began to move. 
Mr. Pratt settled back in his seat and stared straight ahead. He would not look at Thor. Several long minutes passed. Thor was certain Mr. Pratt could hear his heartbeat. It was deafening. Small beads of sweat formed along his brow, and he tried to keep his features blank, but it was a futile effort. Mr. Pratt always knew what he was thinking. No one knew Thor better. I don't blame you, my boy. Thor tried his best to stay calm. Mr. Pratt sighed. That girl is a problem for both of us. I know you understand what I mean. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, my boy. Thor felt his blood turn to ice. Benjamin Pratt never apologized to anyone. He was in dangerous territory. Thor remained silent. Mr. Pratt watched him for a little while. Then he shook his head and sighed again. Her transition was very difficult. I wasn't prepared for her... stubbornness. He spit the word out. I had hoped Tessa's program would succeed. I owed her that much. Her death was tragic. It was also poorly timed. She didn't have time to finish the program. I made a mistake, my boy. I trusted the dietitians. I let them become too involved. And look what happened. One day in and she's already been sent to the food labs. I should have trusted the process. The super gym never fails. I should have trusted the best of the best. Mr. Pratt put his hand on Thor's shoulder. Thor didn't trust him. Benjamin Pratt did not apologize. He did not admit failure or blame. Thor waited. Mr. Pratt sighed again and leaned back against the cushions of the swaying rickshaw. He closed his eyes. I can't give up on her, my boy. I know you understand. I've never told anyone this, but I know I can trust you. I can't send Maggie to fat camp. There is something about her that is unlike anyone else. She has to succeed, Thor. She will be my greatest triumph. And once she's skinny, I'll marry her. Thor laughed. Mr. Pratt couldn't hide his surprise. What's with you? Have I made a joke of some kind? No, sir. He couldn't stop laughing. Mr. Pratt was still smiling, but Thor knew he needed to stop. He couldn't control it. His sides ached and tears streamed down his face. Mr. Pratt wasn't trying to hide his anger now. His face was growing red with rage. Veins stood out on his neck and forehead. All at once, Thor stopped. The quiet, scuffing steps of the man and woman and their soft panting were loud in the new silence. It hung heavy between the two men. Thor made his hands into fists in his lap. He couldn't look at Mr. Pratt. What do you think of her? I don't know, sir. You haven't had her yet? You really do hate the fatties. I just don't find them attractive, sir. It's fun. You kind of sink into them like a pillow. You just have to make sure the lights are off. What do you want to do about Maggie, sir? Oh, create a new program. Something extreme. I'm taking over the diet portion of her treatment. The dietitians got too caught up in the numbers. They don't understand the human condition like I do. I think I've figured her out. I know just what she needs. He clapped his hands and the couple brought the rickshaw to a stop. Mr. Pratt watched a group of people jogging by. He hated jogging. Thor could see the anger brewing. That evening, every member of that group would be taken to fat camp. Anything less than 100% effort at all times could send a client away. Thor had assisted with the transfers many times. Thor, my boy, I expect nothing but your best tomorrow. Destroy her. 
I want her drowning in sweat. I'll take care of the rest. Get out. Thor jumped out of the rickshaw and immediately began running. He ran as hard as he could. His heart was hammering in his chest. His lungs were on fire, but he didn't slow down. He didn't think. He tore down the streets and climbed the outlying hills with large, bounding steps. The trees framing his house came into view. He jumped up and did 18 pull-ups on their branches. The lights inside the house came on, and a bright light illuminated the front door. Maggie was lying on the ground near the door. Her body was naked and bruised. Thor was immediately both aroused and ashamed. He stood over her and could feel the blood rushing through his veins. She was heavy, but he scooped her up and carried her inside. She didn't stir. He dropped her on the table, and her legs fell open. He pulled his pants down, but hesitated. He stared at her motionless body for a long time. Maggie opened her eyes and slowly took in her surroundings. She couldn't speak. Her throat hurt when she tried. The pain made her head swim, and she came close to passing out again. Thor was leaning over her. He was touching her. She could feel it brush against her, but she was too weak to fight. Her arms were lead, and she struggled to lift them. She took him in her hands. Might as well get this part over with. Play along. Thor thrashed around on top of her for a while. It wasn't terrible. He wasn't violent like Mr. Pratt and some of the lesser trainers, and he wasn't as creepy as Tessa. His expression was gentle as he looked down at her. Don't make eye contact. It could override his program. What? There was no answer. Other Maggie was gone. It was a relief, really. Maggie sighed. Thor was still looking at her. His eyes were wide and he smiled a little. She didn't know what to do. They never looked at her. They never acknowledged she was there. His eyes were beautiful. So she avoided them. It was over quickly. Thor gave her a shirt and she put it on. Looks good on you. Maggie sat on the floor with her knees pulled up to her chest and the shirt pulled over her knees. She wrapped her arms around her legs and cried. Was it that bad? Thor tried to laugh, but she could tell he was insulted. Women didn't often cry after being with Thor. He had the body of a god, after all. They might weep with joy, but they never sobbed. I can do better. He knelt beside her and pulled her arms away. She struggled a little, but he was too strong for her. He pushed her legs down and pulled the shirt off. Maggie cried harder, but she didn't fight back. Play along. Soon. Just play along. He got behind her. The tears dripped off her nose and formed a puddle on the floor. He was less gentle this time. Her head smashed into the wall, but he didn't slow down. Harder and harder. She was starting to black out, and he went faster. Slam, 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 slam. Maggie lost consciousness and slumped to the floor. Thor stood up and pulled up his pants. There was blood on the wall. A small pool of it was forming around her head. Shit. Not again. There was blood on his shirt. He used it to mop up the mess on the floor. He cleaned around her and used a wet sponge on the wall. She was breathing, so at least he hadn't killed her. He would think of something to tell Mr. Pratt in the morning. He might even be proud of Thor and give him a raise. Was it a test? Mr. Pratt had done this kind of thing before, but Maggie was different. Mr. Pratt's obsession with her was growing. His actions were increasingly erratic and violent. Thor didn't know what to expect. His emotions swung between his confused feelings for Maggie and his lifelong loyalty to Benjamin Pratt. Thor wasn't used to thoughts or emotions. He couldn't always control his actions when he felt things, and Thor needed to be in control. His life had been simple before he met Maggie. 
He didn't think. He just trained. He pushed himself to perfection. He pushed others far beyond their limits. It didn't require thought or feelings. Maggie was different. She made him think. His head ached every day. His heart fluttered in his chest, and he couldn't focus on his reps when he lifted. It was an entirely new experience, and he hated it. He couldn't decide if he wanted to save her or kill her, and it was making him crazy. Thor didn't like indecision. He was a man of action. And that is the end of Chapter 15, book lovers. I hope you're enjoying Super Gym. I'll be back next week with another chapter. Until then, keep reading.